Hey guys, we're in Custer today with Paul Horsted. He is a photographer for many, many years here in the Black Hills area. Well, so, admit, yep. <laughs> so first of all, tell us how you got started, maybe just in photography in general. Sure. Oh, I started long ago in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I was on the Argus Leader, the newspaper over there. Worked at a weekly paper before that in high school and then found my way to the Department of Tourism in Pierre. Worked there as their photographer for several years and then went freelance about, gosh, 30 years ago. So I've been doing all kinds of different work, but... Uh, fell into book publishing with my wife Camille and uh, she does all the graphic design and we send these to a, a printer and make our way uh, selling these throughout the Black Hills and now really across the country with some of the work we've done in national parks and so on. So yep. Now talk about sort of this niche that you have here with the sure. before and after. Yeah, if I may, I, you know, it's, it's this, I, this is the idea, you know, then and now or yesterday and today as we call it. And basically I'm looking at an old picture that I get from museums or archives or my own collections. And then I try to find the site of that photo and then put my camera exactly where that photographer did, you know, 140 years ago, or maybe a little less than that. But uh, so we look at, you know, early mining history, tourism, uh, all the themes that you see in the Black Hills, uh, as well as other places now where I've where I've taken this type of work. Now I feel like you have to be pretty savvy as far as like directional things <laughs> to find the exact yeah. spot. Yeah, it's uh, it, the research on looking for the old photo sites uh, varies, but Google Earth is really helpful. It's surprising you can kind of zoom in sometimes. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it or that makes it easy, but uh, you can see the background. If you can see the background, see some mountains, and it's like okay, now I know within a couple of miles where this guy was, and then you can gradually work your way to the foreground, and sometimes you'll find the same tree stump or the same rocks that are in the old picture. It's really, really fascinating when, they, when you come across something like that. And now, where are we at here today? Well, we're standing at the site of one of these photos taken on the 1874 Black Hills Expedition. Sometimes people call it the Custer Expedition. A photographer named William Henry Illingworth was part of this expedition of, you know, there were a thousand people along, 100 wagons, 110 wagons, and, you know, 1,500 horses and mules. So it was a huge expedition, but they had this photographer who came and took the very first pictures ever made in the Black Hills. And this is one of his sites we're literally standing on here today. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, you can you can literally see this rock mm -hmm. in one of the pictures, uh, and uh, that's how I was able to determine this was the location. And other people had found this in earlier times. This site we added when we did our research. Many other sites that had not been located, but this one was pretty well known. But it's it's really a cool spot just east of Custer, about three miles, where they camped for five days in 1874. And you do this Black Hills area essentially? Yeah, I've done this all over the Black Hills. Uh, I'm working on a book right now that'll take it across the state of South Dakota, small towns and cities and landmarks all across the state. But I've also done uh, a book about 24 national parks. So how many books do you have out there? We got five books out, uh, not all exactly in this theme, but a lot of it is, uh, as I call it, repeat photography, uh, where I'm trying to occupy the site of a historic photo and see what's changed, see what's see what stayed the same. You don't realize you're driving right through, you know, a campsite of the Custer Expedition, for example, or even in the, the town of Custer up in Deadwood, you're walking the same, the same sidewalk, same streets I mean the same locations different sidewalks yeah. different streets <laughs> yeah. and people were were doing back in 1876 and and that's what I really find appealing it's like a treasure hunt every time I track one of these down <laughs> I yep. was gonna say yeah you gotta be like sort of an investigative type yeah, person I really, I really love it and we're fortunate that people find it interesting and occasionally buy a book so right. we appreciate that they're in most of the local bookstores and museums uh, some art galleries as well as on my website which is just my name paulhorsted.com you can find them on the the big online retailers as well but uh, yeah if you can't locate one just shoot me an email on my website and I'll be glad to, to point anybody in the right direction depending on where they live and what's what's available near them but the Journey Museum in Rapid City Custer Museum up in you know all of those types of places carry our books because of the history angle so okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.